It's time to export the knowledge. In this video, we're going to be talking about quadratics, uh, in particular the quadratic formula, the axis of symmetry, and the discriminant. Now, there's a lot of videos that I've already made on this that I made last year, so I'll link that into the card and in the description. So you can go take a look at those because you will need to know how to complete the square and you'll need to know how to factorize and you'll need to be familiar with quadratics to understand this video. That being said, let's move on. So we're going to actually, how do we actually get the quadratic form? Well, we just have to start with our general formula here. AX squared plus BX plus C. And then we're going to complete the square on it. So let's just do that. We're going to factor out the A and then we're going to divide by A since we don't need it. So let's get rid of that. There we go. And now I'm going to complete the square. So half of my VB value, which is B over A. So half of that is going to be B over 2A. And I'm going to square it, add and subtract to make sure that it's still zero. Factorize it so we, so we get X plus B over 2A squared. I'm also going to expand this term here to get this term here. So moving on. I'm now going to combine the fraction. So what I did here was I got this C value and I times it by 4A over 4A to get this result up here. I'm gonna just shift it to the other side and now we're going to square root it all. And when we square root, we have to have the plus minus here at the front because the square root could be positive or negative, we don't know. And then this 4a squared can be simplified to 2a. Then we transpose b over 2a on this side to the other side and we get this, the quadratic formula. Now this is what you'll see in textbooks, this is what this is something that you should put in your notes if you haven't got it in your notes. It's, it's a useful formula. It will give you the x-intercepts of any quadratic. You just need to sub in the values. Also, uh, just help you solve. And we, there's also a lot of important results that we can derive from us deriving this. So we're going to come back to actually the working out and, and uh, take a look at some other things. So... Alright, now we're going to actually use the quadratic formula. So here's our quadratic here. And our A value in this case is 1, our B value is negative 7, our C value is 10. Here's the quadratic formula, sub it all in. And we get 7 plus minus the square root of 49 minus 40 over 2. And we get x equals 7 plus minus square root of 9 over 2, which is 7 plus minus 3 over 2, which means we get x equals 7 plus 3 over 2, or x equals 7 minus 3 over 2. And we get x equals 5, or x equals minus 2. Hey, that's pretty good! Moving on, we're going to actually get the axis of symmetry and the discriminant from the quadratic formula. So let's do that. So when we got the quadratic formula, there's an important result that we got, and that's up here flashing in yellow. If we move on, and remember how we factored out the A and divided it at the very, very, very start. If we times by A again, we get this. And we're in turning point form. Then that's our result that we just got, and that's turning point form. You can see that there's a very close resemblance between the two. Our k value is going to be this hunk of junk up here, and our h value is going to be the negative of what's in the bracket up there. So that's an important result. We can get the axis of symmetry from that. So if we focus on h, and we think about the any quadratic, like the one that we're that's on screen now, now, our axis of symmetry is just going to be x equals the h value. So, since h is the axis of symmetry, 
the equation for the axis of symmetry is x equals negative b over 2a. So, remember what happened when we graphed. Well, when we graphed a quadratic like y equals x minus 1 times x plus 2, we plotted the intercepts and then we found the axis of symmetry by averaging the two points. So what we did is, once we found that average, we subbed it back in to find the turning point. We can actually use that to our advantage to get the turning point form. So let's actually do that. So let's complete the square using the axis of symmetry. So here's our quadratic. Here's our a, b, and c value. There's our axis of symmetry. Let's sub in the values. And we get our axis of symmetry is free. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to sub x equals 3 into the quadratic. Sub it in. And we get this. Y equals 7. So our turning point is going to be 3, 7. Since our turning point is 3, 7, I can put that into turning point form. Since h is negative 3 and k is 7, remember the horizontal shift is the opposite of the x coordinate for the turning point, we can actually sub that in to our turning point form. And our a value is always just going to be the coefficient of x squared. So I can sub in the information that I have to get x minus 3 squared plus 7. And that's that equation in turning point form. Very easy to do. Now, I want to move on to the discriminant. So, if we look at our quadratic formula again, in yellow there, b squared minus 4ac, that's actually very important. Right? It's so important that we give it its own symbol and its own name. That's the discriminant. So our symbol that we use is uh, capital delta, which is just this triangle thing. And it equals b squared minus 4ac. Now, if the discriminant is greater than zero, we're going to have two x-intercepts or two real solutions, if you want to think of it that way. If this is greater than zero, Let's say uh, this equals this is equal to four. If we put four in here, it's going to be negative b plus minus two, and we're going to have something to plus minus. So we're going to have some we're going to have end up with two solutions. If the discriminant was equal to zero, right, then we'll be plus minusing zero, and we can't plus minus nothing because it doesn't change anything, so this plus minus leaves, and we just have negative b over 2a. And that's our axis of symmetry, so we're only going to have one x-intercept, or one real solution. Now, if the discriminant is less than zero, then there's no x-intercept, because we can't have a square root of a negative number. We can't do that. And since we can't do that, there is no solutions, or no real solutions, for this quadratic. Okay, so let's uh, do some free examples. So I have three graphs over here with uh, their corresponding equations, so let's move on. Let's uh, use this uh, equation here and calculate the discriminant for it. So the discriminant equals b squared minus 4ac, sub in the values, and we get the discriminant is negative. 28 and we can see that on the graph See on the graph here. There is no x-intercept so we could see that the discriminant was going to be positive anyway We move on to our next Quadratic that's going to be this green one here. We can see that there's one solution So we're expecting the discriminant to be zero So there's the discriminant equation sub in the values and we get zero Therefore, there is one x-intercept, and that you can see that graphically there. All right, moving on to our last quadratic, which is this blue one. There's the discriminant, sub in the values, and we get the discriminant equals 40. And therefore, there are two x-intercepts, and we could see them here graphically again. All right. So that's it for this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below or contact me on social media. And I will see you in the next video.